And hi, it's me once again. It's April and I thought I'd do another video for you. There's lots of great things to be talking about at the moment, so I thought I'd share some of the thoughts with just you. Thank you for watching. So one of the great pieces of news at the moment is the fact that we have returned to an amber readiness level, which means we can start to return to face-to-face -face scouting. I know I think this is fantastic and I know many of you will be feeling the same as well. We can meet with young people outdoors with as many as we like, and that's fantastic news, groups as large as we like. We can meet indoors with as many people as the building or the venue can hold. We must be observing social distancing still, we must be trying to protect our young people, but the venue is the only limit on the number of young people we can meet. We're not allowed to meet with mixed sections. So beavers and cubs can't meet together sadly, and cubs and scouts can't meet together. So it's a single section at a time. However, if you have a small scout troop that's very low on numbers, and they want to join with another larger scout troop to make efficiencies of programme, then that is permitted. COVID risk assessments. These are as important as ever. If you've previously submitted and had approved by your DC a COVID risk assessment for an outdoor venue, that's fantastic. You can continue to use that if nothing is changing and the venue is changing, not changing. If you're planning to move indoors, you will need to resubmit your indoors risk assessment. If you've previously had an indoors risk assessment approved by your DC, you may need to just refresh it, look at it with numbers in mind and thinking about venue and those kinds of things. Do just double check it. If you are changing venue at all, in any instance, outdoors or indoors, you will need to resubmit your venue risk assessment. So please do double check with your DC whether you need to submit a COVID risk assessment. We're still in the grips of a pandemic, so please consider masks at all times as well, especially for scouts and explorers who must wear them when indoors. Adults too should be wearing masks when indoors, especially if they are not involved in the delivery of the programme. If they are instructing, of course, it's appropriate that they remove that mask for that period of time, but let's try and protect ourselves and those people around us by keeping masks on and observing social distancing as much as is possible. Finally, in terms of training, it's really important that before we return to scouting face to face, our mandatory training has to be in place. Safety and safeguarding are the two most important elements. And please do talk to your district commissioner about risk assessment around first aid as well. We must have all of these in place. If your safety and your safeguarding are not in place, you cannot return to face to face scouting. So I encourage each of you to take the personal responsibility yourselves to double check that it is in date still and that you have got safety and safeguarding in place. Don't be the reason your group cannot return to face-to-face -face scouting. Other than that, I'm looking forward to seeing all of the great programmes you're delivering on a regular basis. I hope you have a lot of fun doing them, and I look forward to seeing all the photos and the videos of that happening. So last month, we were able to take part in our awards celebration evening. It was a fantastic event that was attended by over 60 of the wonderful adults out there that have been given good service awards or outstanding service awards. I'm really appreciative for the team that came together to pull this event off and it really went really smoothly. We were really great to hear from Jake Mayer, the British mountaineer and adventurer, who also happened to be a Cub Scout down in the Cotswold Vale district. We also heard from Tim Kidd, our UK Chief Commissioner. It was great to hear words from both of them were inspiring and encouraging to all of those that were able to take part in the event. Thank you to so many of you, so, so many of you that haven't yet been given awards, but for all of those that did get rewards this year, well done and congratulations. I really do thank you for all of the work that you put in regularly. We've recently been on the lookout for two Deputy County Youth Commissioners, and I'm really pleased to say that we've been able to appoint them. Kat and the team have been able to interview and appoint Brooke Martin and Harry Gibbons. So congratulations to Brooke and Harry who will be joining the County Youth Commissioner team to help us deliver even more youth shaped scouting. You'll see a little bit about them coming up in the coming weeks and months, but in the meantime, a very warm welcome, please, to Harry and to Brooke. It's great to have you as part of the team. Congratulations. So many of you will know Gary Law. Gary was the District Commissioner for the Forest of Dean District and has been for the last five years. He's recently finished his appointment and I'm really thankful for everything he's done in that district for so long. He's been a real inspiration and he really created some change in lots of different ways across that district. And I know many of the adults there have shared their support 
for him over the past five years as well. Thank you, Gary. But Gary isn't stepping away completely. He's offered and been given the role of the Assistant County Commissioner for Inclusion. So Gary, along with Carol, will be shaping a team to help all of you as adults in scouting have better access to support and information to help you with making scouting as inclusive as it possibly can be. Thank you, Gary, for what you did in the Forest of Dean, and thank you for taking on the role of ACC for Inclusion. We're really looking forward to what you and the team can offer to our county over the coming years. I've had the great pleasure recently of continuing to help deliver some of our training. This online delivery of training, although it's a bit weird at times, is a really fantastic way to get to as many people as possible. By from the comfort of your own home, you can take part in modular training for almost all of our modules. Do check out our website at gscouts.org.uk forward slash training to find out what modules we are running online whilst we're not able to meet face to face. When we are allowed to meet face to face and all the restrictions have been lifted, we will turn to face to face courses again as part of a blended solution. We'll do some online and we'll also make them available face to face so you can complete them in that way, whatever feels best for you. If you do have wood badge training that you need to do, why not take a look at our website, gscouts.org.uk forward slash training, and you'll be able to find all of the different courses we are delivering while we're still not able to meet face to face. I'm also really thankful for the team that have been able to pull together the first response option. We've got a first response training course that's available now, and it's delivered in two parts. Part A, which is the theory, is delivered using three two hour online sessions. I'm really thankful to Evie, to Dave and to Shell who have been delivering these recently to dozens and dozens of you out there. Part B, which will be the practical element of it, that'll be available as soon as we're allowed to do face-to-face -face scouting for adults when we return to a green level. Until then, I'd recommend if you need to do your first response training, do visit our website again, find out when the dates are, get booked on and do those three two-hour sessions to complete the theory part. And if that's what you need to do for your wood badge, that'll help work towards it. Thank you to everybody that has been taking part in our training. We get some great feedback at the moment. I encourage all of you, if you've not taken part in some recently, why don't you check it out? It's a really easy way to get your training completed, including managers and supporters. So what have we got coming up? On Sunday the 25th of April, from about 10.30 a.m., we'll once again be running our St George's Day celebration. This will be a chance as a whole county to come together, share our promises and renew them together as one county. We'll be sharing more details very soon, but do put the date in your diary. It's for young people and for adults, and we're going to be looking for as many people to get involved as is possible. So today sees the publication of our latest edition of G Scouts magazine. Thanks once again to John and for everybody that's contributed to it. It's great to be able to read all of the great things that have been happening and that are coming up. I'm really thankful for everybody that helps contribute to that. You'll find it on our website. If you go to our homepage at gscouts.org.uk, you'll find it as one of the news posts there when you get there. Also in there, you'll find more of the blogs that Carol has been doing. I'm really thankful for Carol, who's been doing those blogs on a regular basis for us. Do take a look at them. They talk about lots of great things, especially thinking about how we can support our own mental health. So all that's left for me to say is thank you. Thank you for everything you have been doing. Thank you for everything that you are doing. And thank you for everything that you continue to do to support young people and adults across all of Gloucestershire. Your work is invaluable and for young people, it's life changing. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.